and look what we got here this is like a trademark for anything that I work on <laughs> ripping out stuff this is really necessary and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that I've discovered uh, as part of this so um, I showed you that these tube sockets here were, were cleaned up and this one's cleaned up I'm now working on the center section and um, if you recall there was a big glob of something which was the B minus it's actually this little thing right here and this little terminal strip was right down in here and I've taken it out obviously and I've got a new terminal strip that I'm going to put in but underneath the terminal strip they had these two components right here which is a uh, let's see it's a 4.7 meg resistor and uh, there's a uh, 1000 uh, MMF I gotta convert that I'm not sure what that is uh, anyway I'll tell you what that is in a moment but there's a cap and a resistor here that goes directly to this uh, coil and I was running underneath here and I think it was touching on one of the connections I think that's part of my problem shorting out the coil and uh, not allowing any signal through so getting this thing uh, cleaned up is going to be imperative um, to get this thing to work and remember this is um, this component here is something that someone was was goofing around with this is a 0.05 uh, cap that goes to B minus and um, I just have a feeling that someone just kind of rammed this thing in there and crushed all those wires underneath here. It was touching the chassis, it was touching all this stuff, and I think that's probably what my problem was. So um, so the plan is going to be to clean this up a little bit better. And uh, I've got my terminal strip here that I'm going to mount. And um, I'm pretty much you know, going to stop at the, from here. I'm not going to do anything back here. I also did remove those resistors that, uh, that JP had mentioned makes some sense. I'm going to go in with what the engineers designed with and if I have a problem I can always add them back. So I'm going in with just the straight uh, diode to the 50 ohm resistor. I'm going to put this 2.4 um, K resistor back in circuit when I'm done and, uh, and that type of thing. I'm also um, tracing back all the, um, the filament lines and I did notice that one of the filament lines was connected to the wrong place it appears that it was connected um, to B minus which it shouldn't have been so again this is something that someone else did so uh, I think that the only thing I'm guilty of right now is trusting someone else's work so um, we're gonna continue to clean up these filaments get them uh, get them in the right place make sure everything's connected correctly and then um, I'm very confident when I get done with this thing this thing's gonna work so that's where we are. So I'm going to continue my uh, my slash and burn here, and um, and get this thing back to where it needs to be, because I'm really I really want to hear what this radio sounds like. You know, I just realized I took a look at the eBay listing this morning that I bought this from, and um, it said uh, plays great, needs work, probably caps. And I remember when I got the unit, <laughs> there was no electrolytic cap in it, and there was wires hanging all over the place. So. Um, if I would have recognized that, I would have gone back to the cellar and complained, but that's okay. I was looking for a good project anyway. So, um, so that's the plan. Uh, we're going to continue forging ahead here and replacing the components that need to be replaced and getting everything wired neatly like this. And, um, you know, this, this should go in the hall of shame for someone. Um, look at all that crap on there. Never took the time to clean it. It's just all over the place. So, uh, you know, we're going to do better the job than that. That's what we do. We don't, do, we don't rush. We take our time. And uh, we do a good job. So that's the plan, folks. I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when I have more. Be back. Okay, so what you're looking at here is, um, is the couplet. And I got this big, big roll of heat shrink tube, as I said I would. And what we're going to do is take this piece of, of heat shrink tube, right, just like that. And we're going to put this couplet inside, like this. And make sure it hangs down a little bit because it is going to shrink, like so. And we're going to take our heat gun. And we're going to shrink that thing to see what it looks like. There it goes. It's down real nice. Let's help it a little bit. I 
I've never really used such a big piece of this before, but it seems like it's doing its job. So far, so good. I'm going to hit this bottom here. Let's flip it over. Let's flip it back over here. Now I'm going to put some extra heat on the top here. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay. So this thing is nice and hot. Um, I'm going to cut off the top of that piece. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because it's going to seal it. Ow! It's hot. <laughs> but you see what it did there? It sealed the top. So the top is all sealed. And let's see what we got going on in the bottom here. Okay. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually okay with this. Top looks good. Back is, is done. It's a little bit warm, this thing. I wish this had um, had come down a little bit, but I may be able to trim this, actually. I'm probably going to... I'm sorry, I'm not in the camera. I'm probably going to gonna trim this just a little bit. But basically, we have our couplet protected in a piece of heat trim. So, uh, so that's how that works. So if any of you uh, want to make your own couplets, that's one way to cover it up. And I'll put a little sticker on here that says PC160. That's exactly what it says on here, on this bad one. So that's the story. When I mount it, I actually think what I'm going to do, if you look at the radio here, I'm actually going to mount it right here. I'm going to drill some holes right here. I'm going to mount it on top and have all the wires come down to a terminal strip. I think. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when I decide what I'm going to do there. But, uh, but there's our couplet. All ready to go. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, there we go. We've got it labeled. So now we're ready to install it. It dried up real nice, or cooled off real nice, I should say. It's nice and rigid. Got everything protected. This top is sealed up real good. So this stuff works. So if you ever want to do something with larger uh, heat shrink wrap, it really does, uh, it does a great job. This is how wide it is, and this is what it comes down to. It's almost half the size. So uh, pretty cool. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to show you now what I've done with this uh, couplet. I'm going to start to mount it into the radio. And you'll see here that I've mounted a terminal strip here. And there's six available connections on the terminal strip. Uh, this particular terminal strip doesn't have a ground. So everything is mounted on this uh, side here. There's a metal band that runs across it. So this is pretty convenient. There's nine wires coming out of the couplet. So here's one, here's two, here's three and six. And if you look at the schematic, 3 and 6 go to the B-. minus. So 1, 2, 3, and 6. And then we have 4, 5, 7. And then I have 8 and 9 just hanging out right here. Okay? Now what this is going to enable me to do is just use very short wires. Let me bring this down so you can look at it head on. Like that. And what this is going to enable me to do is be really, really neat about this. And not have wires crossing all over the place. And I could just home run nice wires to where, they, where it needs to go in this section, and it'll be relatively neat. This couplet itself has plenty of clearance here. It actually tucks underneath. I've got heat shrink tube here, so I'm not having to worry about it hitting the chassis. And uh, when I put this back in the cabinet, it's going to be nice and flush. I don't have to worry about that. It doesn't throw off any heat, so I uh, don't need to worry about that either. These are only um, uh, half a watt resistors in here, so there's not a lot of heat coming out of this thing. So that's how we're going to mount it, and that's how we're going to keep this section clean compared to what it was before. So really, I just need to run some wires. Some of the wires go here to the volume control, and then to the um, to the 1U5 and the 3V4 tubes. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm still doing this section, working on wiring there. I still haven't mounted this uh, terminal strip in here, but that's going to be coming up. And I'm going to replace uh, this, this very old capacitor, which needs to be replaced, and the resistors and all this stuff. So, work continues, but now at least I know how I'm going to mount the couplet, just like that.
Okay. All right. Um, that's it for now. I think I'm. Um, I think I'll put this video up because uh, Christmas is coming and. I'm just going to work on this whenever I get the time. Uh, unfortunately, it's busy time of year, as you know. So, um, so I'll put this video up, and then uh, as I make progress over the course of the next week or so, I'll uh, I'll come back and give you an update. But uh, for those of you that celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas! I'll see you guys uh, soon. You guys take care. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start uh, mounting this uh, this replacement couplet. And you'll see exactly what I told you I was going to do. So I've mounted a terminal strip here. Um, all of them are, are, are active connections. None of them are going to the chassis ground. This particular one has a metal frame around it, and it's secured here on the ends. And I've got six available to me, um, and I have nine wires. However, when you look at the schematic, uh, which I've uh, showed you before, pin three... <laughs>